It's time to take a swig of coffee and begin a tradition. Started way back when the very first Magic the Gathering card review began. It's time for me to convey to you the truth of exactly how Update 8324, the best branded name for a patch of all time, it's time for me to tell you how Update 8324 is going to change the Age of Empires for meta. Now, it is Wednesday, which means I'm sure you've already seen the Viper and Hera and Grubby and everyone review the patch and do that sort of stuff. And if they said any of the things that I'm about to say, then they're also right. Two people can be right at the same time. I know that Twitter doesn't think that, but I think that, you think that, we both think that we're real people. When it comes to Update 8324, we're not only going to be talking about the impact on the game, we're also going to be giving a couple of asterisks to how I feel this communicates in certain ways to us, the random chumps that play the video game. All right, let's talk about this thing. So, Update 8324 was launched on Monday. It's currently Wednesday. I just didn't feel like streaming Monday or Tuesday. I'm tired. Starting today, you'll be able to install this patch. Whoa! With this update, we'll bring a few key features, etc. Update 8324 also includes a substantial number of balance updates. Many of these updates, more than a hundred, are in response to callouts you've made. Remember, no developer should ever trust the public at large. The developer knows better than we do, and I'm gonna stick to that until I'm dead. Uh, and we'll promote challenging and exciting opportunities regardless of which civilization you're playing as or against. Um, and so some various other notes, some various other notes. Um, I did read something that I thought was interesting. So, um, patches have to go through what's called a certification process, uh, in many consoles and in many, um, development environments, which means that they get finalized and they need to be reviewed here and reviewed here, make sure it doesn't break this, make sure it still functions over here and all this stuff. And again, I don't know if this is hundred percent true, but I'm more than happy to just continue to propagate poorly verified information. I understand that this patch, which was released on the 29th of November, was actually finalized on the 11th of November. Can someone confirm that for me? This is my understanding. So this is a little bit outdated. It's a little bit outdated in terms of some of the changes because we as players experience, it was this way Sunday and the patch came Monday. Didn't they pay attention to what happened last Sunday? Well, even if they could have, there's no way. No way it would have possibly, possibly, possibly taken that short of a period of time. Oh, I'm sorry. I said the 11th. I think I, I got my numbers wrong. I think it was the 20th, November 20th, which was like 11 days ago or something. I don't know. Who, who knows? The important thing is that this patch is older than the day that it was launched. It takes a while to do patch changes. So here's instructions for downloading them. Sure. Cool. Before we dive into the good stuff, your terminology, what's the difference between a patch and an update? This is a lost battle. This is a patch. This is a patch. Everyone calls it a patch. It's a patch. It is a patch or it is an expansion. There are no such things as updates. We understand seasons. We understand patches. This is a patch. Okay, this is patch 8324. I mean, I'll try. I'll try to use it. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of like when League of Legends and Dota were like, we're a hero, we're a champion, we're a guy. Like, look, they're characters. Fellas. We're defining an update as anything with a larger number of changes, including multiple new features and updates. Updates will be guided by player feedback, etc. Patches are important too if an update is something laden with bigger features, updates, and fixes. A patch allows us additional flexibility to introduce more focused changes. What are the numbers these things signify? They're the build version. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Ah, this is some of the things that I want to be able to change right away. Great. Features. Yep. Now, I've read through these patches, so these are not hot, fresh notes. These are thoughtful, thoroughly reviewed, well-considered statements. <laughs> We'd like to give a huge thanks to your feedback for helping guide many of these changes, tweaks, and additions. As mentioned in our community roadmap, our plan is to continue listening to what you have to say with each update so that we can continue to build a great Age of Empires 4 experience together. Again, I respect that Relic wrote this. I completely understand that they're trying to say things like we thank the community warmly for being so wonderful and pointing out what they don't like. But I just want to say, Relic, you know better than we do, okay? I'm sure internally, the phrase that is said most when reading feedback is, I fucking know. 
And I believe you. I believe you. I just want to once again defend the developers. Even in the face of me. And as someone who is being recreationally arrogant in this patch review, again, sharing all of the 100% truths of the new meta, I just don't think developers should really take shit that people say that seriously because they fucking know their game better. You know what I mean? This is, again, a reminder that I will be concerned with and criti critical of many of the changes in this. But, you know, what, what the fuck do I know? Anyways. Based on community feedback, we made the decision to implement the ability to enable in-game in player scores. Except just in custom lobbies. <sighs> Get out of my multiplayer game. I don't want scores in here. I don't want the scores at all. Get rid of those scores. The ability to view the map... Post-match. Oh, by the way, I think this is a correct change. It's good to have the capability to have that in various custom settings. I think it's just wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong in competitive 1v1 multiplayer. <laughs> the ability to view the post-map. The map post-match. Oh, my God. Okay, what this means is in Age of Empires 2, when the game is done and you hit GG and you surrender, you can slide around and look at what everyone's doing. Ah. Oh. Um. Oh. Have a, having a little rumblies in the tumblies. Mm, excuse me. With this latest update, you'll be able to pan across the map and get a better view of player strategies if you're eliminated from an ongoing team-based multiplayer match. Oh, just team-based? Really? Dude, I hope that this is in 1v1. Again, I haven't played. I haven't played in like a week. Um, Because again, it was Thanksgiving and I was seeing human beings and I wasn't in my house much. Unbelievably exhausting. Socialization has become very overwhelming for me in my post-lockdown state. Updated. We've heard feedback that the mini-map can be difficult to follow at a glance. Ah, yeah. Oh, yes. We've made several adjustments to ensure better readability, including the changes detailed below. As always, we're interested in hearing from you. Once you've spent some time with these updates and once you've tempered your communication, you over-the-top caps lock using bastard. That's what I feel like should be included here, because let's be honest. The public, including me... Can we really be trusted with keyboards? I don't think so. I don't think we can be. Anyways. Um, love! Overall, love what they've done to the minimap. Have any of you seen the fucking minimaps on streams? You can read them. It's not giant deer horns obfuscating everything. I mean, I also think that UI UX is the sort of thing that you always are updating and changing. You'll never be done. It's always like, okay, let's shrink everything on average. Okay, most of that shrinking was good, but let's make sure, I don't know, the sacred sites are still large. Okay, now once we've done that, we should actually change the grayscale color on the sacred sites because they're larger, but let's make them grayer and let's whiten things like the deer and the trading post. You know, they're, they're always getting tuned. Any of you who played Heroes of the Storm know that that game's UI got tweaks and tunes and reworks and retweaks and retunes for years. Um, may it rest in peace. And I, I mean, Blizzard just did a fantastic job continuing to improve this. And so, I mean, the Relic's great. Icon size is smaller. I mean, overall, it just looks amazing. The one thing that I found a little odd about this change is that maps that have rivers will not show shoreline fish. It will not show shoreline fish. Instead, it will only show deep water fish. So it's like very difficult to send your scout along the river and glance at the mini map and be like, oh, there's some fish here and there's not any fish there. Like fish are already very difficult to see on the main screen. Like very, very challenging to see on the main screen. All right, here's the most important change. We've moved the Chinese dynasty button and user interface to a less prominent position on the screen. This, I screamed almost as much as during Extreme Blob Escape when I'd be playing and I'd fucking open up the Song Dynasty or the Tang Dynasty button and be like, Gang, fuck off! It was so good. Garrison behavior has seen uh, adjustments uh, to better put you in charge of the decision making while also ensuring your economy stays as efficient as possible. You can turn off one click garrison and your villagers will no longer automatically load into a hold when right clicking and one step need to be summoned to safety using the command card icon. As well, when you ungarrison villagers, they'll respond to rally points and immediately get back to work. Let's do this. Let's go to the settings. Controls. Let's see. Where do you think this is? 
I think it's under game. Great. Great, that's good. Perfect. Um, great. And I'm sure that I'll need to relearn this. Um, I'm sure I'll need to relearn. Um, um, cause I mean, muscle memory is, is one aspect, but I think the more important aspect is deliberateness in a game where you have really complex controls, where things matter a great deal, like the tiny differences between things. Um, when, if I shift Q something, if it did have resources, it drops it off and then goes to the, what's next in the shift queue. If it does not have resources, it just garrisons. So this, I think, is a much better way to uh, fix this. If we introduce new options in the campaign, doesn't matter. Don't play it. Some selection improvements have been made in this build. Please, please, the weakest aspect of the UX is the selection box. With this update, you should find trees, corpses, sheep, depleted deep fish swarms, and relics easier to select. Yeah. They may not have changed. They may not have changed how the Imperial official works. That's okay. Population panel has been updated to display depleted and remaining population. Sure, that makes sense. Balance. As I mentioned, we're excited to introduce a hefty number of balance updates today. Age of Empires 4's lead scapegoat, Eric Robel, is the person who you should at when you're grumpy. Describes the intention behind these changes. Now, if this says something deeply meaningful, I'll be shocked. In Age of Empires 4, our goal is to provide high-impact unit counters and ensure that most powerful and successful armies include a diverse mix of units. This encourages players to constantly scout one another's towns to get updated information on the kinds of units their opponents are creating and unleash devastating counters. Our balance updates center around ensuring the core unit roster, as well as unique units and technologies, are working properly to fit this vision. Here's the thing. Principles... Um, guidelines, acronyms of how balance works. These are primarily communication tools and shorthand tools for developers to speak with each other. And I have been so annoyed at community people being like, dude, like for instance in Magic the Gathering, there was something called fire design. Which was like, if we're trying to make a card, first of all, it needs to be fun. That's the F. The I is it needs to be interactive. There needs to be some sort of counterplay. I don't remember what the R and the E are, but, you know, you get it. it. It's an acronym that you can imagine people internally going, Ooh, does this piece of the game, does it fit the fire design? Is it fun? Yes, here's why it's fun. Is it interactive? Yes, here's the desired counterplay. You know, it's just like a metric to go through. But also, it's just a lens to look at shit. What we all obviously want is the game to be awesome and good. And I always feel that, like, when communities read this sort of things, like, this is... Th nothing here seems incorrect or shocking, but also I feel like, you know, community members will read this and just be like, I don't think that armies should have diverse mixes of units. That's not how I play Age of Empires. And they're probably still actually secretly able to do that in the fucking game, you know what I mean? But anyways, like this, who cares? Who cares? This is, this is fine. This is fine. Game, game is already fun. Do your thing, Relic. We trust you. The dev team is also keeping close eye on the ever-evolving meta and are aware of certain specific siege... are aware of a certain specific siege unit outperforming its counterpart. Springles for those searching for the specific top. The team is looking to make sure it's reminded of its role as an anti-siege specialist and will be working with the workshop to deploy it in the future. I found this, because again, this is not the first time that I've read the patch notes. I certainly skimmed the patch notes and did not, did not give it as thorough a read as I'm doing right now. But I, f I found this a little strange. Um, Springolds are, frankly, one of the best units I've ever seen in an RTS. Generally, if you start listing off some properties, like the power of the unit, the overall... Um, well, let me avoid power. Uh, that's, that's too vague, sorry. Magic player term. The damage of the unit, in particular the, the DPS, the damage output, the range, the speed slash mobility, the health, um, you know, and, and and so on and so on. 
The Springle just is like maxed at all of them. It's a high damage, very fast, long ranged unit. Like, I mean, I look at it, I'm just like, holy shit. And there's not even like flying units in the game that can like pick away at the Springles that can't shoot up. Right? The Springles are the best fucking unit. Um, and I, I truly think that, I mean, I don't even care about the role of the Springles. It's just an insanely strong unit right now. It's like way, way, way overtuned as a unit. So I was really surprised. There's no Springle changes. In case you didn't know, there's no Springle changes. Okay, so. So here's the core units for all civs. Spearmen get bonus cavalry damage. Sure, just a little bit more. Crossbowmen get a little bonus anti-heavy damage. So this will mean that crossbowmen are a little better versus men-at-arms, a little better versus horse pals. Um, same with elite crossbowmen. Here come the most bizarre changes in the game. Horsemen, who suck. Ranged armor increased from 0 to 1. Nice. Early horsemen. Actually, all horsemen's health is dropped precipitously. So... I want to um, point to something that Relic did half here. Relic did things like, um, you know, the, the mini-map can be difficult to follow at a glance. So here's the changes. Overwatch did a spectacular job just putting little notes by each thing. Because there, there's, there's really two things that any entertainment company is shipping as a product. One thing is the game, or the movie or the book, but in this case, the game. The other thing is the expectation management. If you're releasing books, one every year in a series, and you're gonna take a year off from doing that, you might say, hey everyone, coming up, I'm releasing book six, and I'm excited to say I already have most of book seven done, but I'm going to be taking a year off because all of my time was spent writing and I'm so burnt out. I was finding Book 7's quality was going to shit. So I'm taking a year. That's the sort of thing that the like audiences, once they hear that, they go, yeah, that makes sense. I wouldn't want Book 7 to be trash. Sure, go ahead. So one of the things that is very, very nice, let's, let's talk about the, the high-level statement. Do I think these balance changes are good? Do I think these balance changes are bad? You know what I really feel? This is a significant amount of changes, and the game has been out like a month. If some of the changes are good and some of the changes are bad, but I note that maybe in a month they're going to do another one, and a month later they're going to do another one. I mean, that just reassures the shit out of me. I think we'll probably be building Springolds in the month of December in large quantities. Uh, but yeah, cool, right? I think that at a high level, this communication, this expectation management has shifted for me because I formerly was like, there was this weird tiny baby patch for babies that addressed and fixed nothing, what the fuck? And now here's a huge patch, and I'm like, oh, okay, all right, fuck, yeah, yeah, seems pretty good. So high, that's the highest level communication, but I think there's a smaller scale communication, which is, it's not that I look at this and I don't understand what the change is. It's not that I look at this and I don't necessarily understand what the net effect is. It's that I look at this and I don't know what it is that they're addressing. So if they post this, and imagine they said the following, in team games, horsemen are disproportionately dominant. Or, we have learned that people are not building a lot of horsemen, but when players get spread out, this is a disproportionate win rate pops up when people do build horsemen. You know, like, this is one of those things that some guidance here for me mentally to frame would help a ton, because I love this unit. I fucking love horsemen but they're pretty weak. And I'm surprised to see this change implemented. Hand cannon damage reduced. Of course, hand cannons were just busted good. Battering ram movement speed reduced. Yes, battering ram health reduced. Yes, battering ram pop reduced. Yes, battering ram ranged armor increased from infinity to a, to a thicker layer of infinity, to like Aleph one of infinity. Manganel weapon reload time reduced from it still gets killed by Springolds before it shoots a second shot. Um, this uh, is actually a fucking ridiculous buff. Um, this is a ridiculous, like, I mean, holy ridiculous. That's a big buff. 
Um, Magnadels were already quite good. Were already quite good. Um, it's just that Springles exist, so they get sort of deleted. And this is something that I, I am more... Um, I'm trying to find a word that doesn't make me sound like a complete vain turd, but let's go with it. I'm much more sensitive to this sort of thing than the average bear because, you know, I played StarCraft 1 competitively for like 15 years, and then I was deep into StarCraft 2 for a very, 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 very long time. But even then, still, I've been playing StarCraft 1 that entire time. And there's this concept of what I'll call invisible walls which is if you watch top level plays, I'm just gonna make up some units so we're not thinking about Age of Empires or Starcraft. Let's say there's a unit called a warrior. And when you watch players play, they're almost always building warriors as the main part of their army. And there's this completely different unit called a soldier that we don't see. We, all, we see almost no one build soldiers. So then people, will ask questions like, well, why don't people just build anti-warriors since everyone's building warriors? Why don't I ever see anti-warrior stuff built? And the reason is because soldiers will then immediately get made and fucking end the game. So again, it's this invisible wall. You can't get the anti-warrior thing because there's this invisible wall of the soldier that prevents this from happening. And this is a little bit what I feel is like uh, there with the Manganel that you don't really see that many of them produced because if there's enough Springles on the battlefield, they just get smacked immediately. Um, but I, I think this is still a substantial buff because they're, they're quite good. They're quite good um, already, and this is gonna make them quite gooder. Magnanol area of effect shape change from 180 to 360. I have no idea what this means. I don't even know. Ribaldoquin fire armor increased. Ribaldoquin ranged armor. Whatever. Most of you can't even pronounce this, so, you know. I was like, most of you can't spell it. That was the original joke I was going to make, except the problem is, that's how it's spelled. Do you see? Do you see why I last second veered and switched directions? Excellent. Please review the patch notes to the joke for any further clarification. Naval. Fishing boat wood increased. Very excellent. Thank God. Thank God. Um, for any of you who have not gone deep... Uh, on, like, real proper mm, competitive shits. Um, an early dock is basically a cheap early second town center. So it's incredible. So it's just, like, absolutely incredible. Um, so the fact that they're increasing fishing boats to cost more wood means that you actually need to do a little bit more thoughtful retuning of your economy balancing in the main base, which is great. Arrow ship bonus damage versus incendiary class increased. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Because the important thing is that as long as the incendiary boats explode, I'm happy. Core buildings, outpost arrow slit and placement now also increases garrison arrow weapon range from 6 to 8. That's good. Otherwise, you'd load up an outpost and you'd still get shit on by longbows. Oh, which have range 7. Elite Army Tactics Tech Health and Damage Bonuses increased from 10 to 20%. <gasps> oh my god! Fuck! Okay, so there is... Let's actually just show it. Beep. Home. Learn. English or whoever. Scrolling down here. Beep. University. Beep. Uh, Elite Army Tactics increase the health of all melee infantry by 20% and their damage by 20%. This used to be 10 and 10. Men-at-arms and spear boys, mm -mm -mm, getting absolutely smickety smacked. I mean, that's a lot. That's a huge amount. All units elite rank technology research time has been reduced. Um, I think that's fine. Uh, time is a strange thing in Age of Empires because things, uh, Age of Empires, more so than almost any RTS I've played, is a sort of resource restrictive game, less so of a time restrictive game. And when I when I say this, like, I mean, if we just come back to this, you know, go to the blacksmith, like, it's one minute, one minute, one minute. It just costs a minute to research these things. The real restriction is the amount of resources it takes to get these. I mean, this is 50, 125, and eventually 150, 350. It's quite an increase. Um, so... 
So, I mean, the these reduction in time is kind of fascinating to me, honestly. Reduction in time is pretty fascinating to me because, like, I, I've never really felt like it's significant. Now, you contrast this with StarCraft and, like, making a carrier is 160 seconds. I mean, it just takes forever to get, like, one fucking carrier out. Um, anyways. Civilization specific technology, the Abbasid dynasty. Phalanx technology moved from the House of Wisdom to the barracks. I understand that this is broken. There's a bug right now where spearmen get infinite range. Does anyone have the clip? Does anyone have the clip? Years writer says, by the way, careful if you're going to try Abbasid bug. I will certainly not be trying the Abbasid bug. Does anyone have a clip? They're floating around everywhere. Chinese. Officials' tax collection ability cooldown reduced from 30 to 15 seconds. Insane buff. In fucking sane buff. So, Imperial officials can go around collecting tax. It's basically their way of generating gold. Uh, and structures, when they're in use, build up gold on them. So, if you have a blacksmith producing, 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 researching, researching, as it's working, goes and slowly uh, advances forward. Um, this 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 money amount, and then your tax collector goes and doop picks it up, drops it off, and that's how you generate gold. The fact that this cooldown is reduced is so significant because there was this real fucking stupid problem with Chinese um, late game gameplay where you'd have like hundreds of gold stored at all these structures, and there was no way for your tax collectors to collect quickly enough. They just literally could not collect it quickly enough. It was so stupid. Zhuganu, food reduced from 60 to 20. Insane buff. In fucking sane. Yeah, it has less health. But I mean, this buff is fucking ridiculous. They now cost 20, 30, 30. 20 food, 30 wood, 30 gold. Astounding. Zhuganu, all ranks training time reduced from 22 to 15. That, sure, it's totally fine. Nest of bees! We have speed bees, baby. Fuck yeah, that's great. Minimum range increase, no one cares. Health reduced, no one cares. They're bees. Training time reduced, sure. Bees damage increased, woo! Yes, 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 yes. Allied Russian, I love this joke. Nest of speed. Yes. Speedy bees. A Delhi Sultanate. Sanctity technology age requirement increased from dark to feudal. Now I know many of you who don't know how to read will want this line translated. This says, Delhi Sultanate has been removed from the game. Um. <laughs> Um, and then scholar research system has been adjusted to correlate with the civilization's viable opportunities to produce scholars. Early tech research time has been reduced, later ones increased. Okay, so let's go through each of these. Sanctity technology age requirement increase. Sanctity says you can capture sacred sites early. You used to be able to research this in the Dark Age, so the build order for Delhi was the following. You start off, you build a mosque. At the mosque, you research sanctity immediately while building stuff up. And then you can suddenly capture the sacred sites in Feudal Age. So it's a really interesting arc of gameplay to Delhi where the game would begin and you didn't really have that many unique, cool units in Feudal Age. You know, you don't have like Zhuganu or something like this. Um, and of course, someone please correct me on that pronunciation. Uh, we don't have Zhuganu or something like this. You would just go out and you'd capture those sacred sites. And this would be like your edge. Um, now that it's been shifted to feudal, this does two things. One, it just kind of neuters this cool style of play that was very popular. I do think that Delhi Sultanate probably doesn't need to focus on these early um, captures, but... It was generally regarded that Delhi Sultanate didn't just benefit from getting the, this early technology. Their whole gameplay was centered around this technology. So a lot of people are like, huh, what, what then is the arc for Delhi? But then this is the one that's really strange. So the way that Delhi used to function is all their technologies cost five times as long as the other civs. So if my research took one minute, Delhi research would take five minutes. And the idea was that you would make scholars, which is basically your monk, your priest unit, and scholars could, the number of scholars you had would increase the speed of technology research. So if you had like six scholars, that five minute technology would be pulled down to like a minute and a half or two minutes or whatever the math winds up being. Now you, you might be going, well, God, 
who the fuck would ever want to do that? Well, again, the Delhi research, all of it's free. It costs nothing to research. And so the whole point was early game, you have really slow research speed, but as the game goes on, you can speed that research up and then you can get more researches than all the other factions. And the thing that they did that like conceptually, I feel like kind of makes sense, but feels odd is that they said, you know, you don't have that many scholars early game. So we're only gonna make one minute technologies take three minutes to research that you can then reduce down. Oh, well, late game, you're gonna be able to make lots of scholars. So let's make it 15X. And the problem I have with this is that this makes everything feel fucking strange. Is it, is it just me? Because this feels, this feels weird to me. I mean, this feels very weird to me because it's almost like, yo, you have to build scholars proportional to your age. It feels very pigeonholy as opposed to, well, I'm not going to focus on those now, but then I'm going to focus on these upgrades way later by getting these at this time or this sort of thing. Just intuitively, I'm like, this kind of feels like I'm being bludgeoned into a very particular play style, but you know, whatever, that's fine. Um, but apparently these are fully bugged. Is that right? Um, I've seen a lot of complaints about this being just bugged to shit. Longbowman's setup camp ability will now deactivate if the longbowman enter combat. Um, I'm indifferent towards this. Reduce armor of French Hulk from 6 to 2. Eh. It's whatever. I'd, I'll have to play against it to feel it. Um, 6 to 2 is a fucking insane nerf. I mean, like... Armor amounts in RTS games are, like, just insane. Insane. Because, I mean, you can imagine if a ship dealt six damage or seven damage, it would be doing one to the Hulk. But now if the armor is reduced to two, your seven damage shot is now dealing five, so you are five times more effective. It's ridiculous. Holy Roman Empire, emergency repair, influence, whatever. I believe that they fixed the prelate bugs, but we'll see these later. Landmarks are now able to pack an unpackable at maximum population. Uh, I believe that this uh, is about um, when you pack and unpack, does it actually give you the supply? Does it take the supply away? So it seems fine. No, no longer affects siege class units. Okay, that seems fine. That seems pretty fair. That's fair. That's fair. So I want to scroll down here. Ah, yeah. Here's the... There's Civ-specific bug fixes where we will go to. Now, these maps... These maps have been changed. I, I, I really don't care. Uh, about these map changes. I think one of the remarkable strengths of Age of Empires as a game is that it just has a ton of different styles of maps. And going from game to game to game to game... Oh yeah, I skipped Roost. Thanks, Darth Daroxia. Um, When it comes to maps, going from game to game to game to game, each game I'm like, oh, it's a new map, and what is it that I need to do here? If they're changing the map, it's just still... I'm still going to have that same feeling, so I don't really care. I'm sure they're just rebalancing to probably make sure that I mean, there's games that I played where on my side of the map, I had like five gold and my opponent's side of the map, they had like three gold. And I'm like, well, of course that would happen to me. I'm the luckiest player alive. Why would you not expect me to have more stuff? Uh, Boyar's Fortitude moved. Laudia ships that activate a roll switch will now incur movement penalty. Sure. Laudia fishing boat roll switch now. Cost increased by 25 per roll. I don't even know how these ships work, so that's fine. Yeah. All right. Oh, uh, you no longer cancel unbuilt stone walls for additional rocks, Mongo Pack landmarks. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of bugs. Small bugs. I don't know if any I don't think any of these are notable. Crossbowmen no longer gain plus one range after gaining the incendiary arrows technology. Come on, come on. Drake here says they remove sacred sites from Black Forest, which is the only significant one. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. I think it's I, I think it's fair. I think it's fair. It's super easy to turtle on that map. Abbasid Dynasty. Camel Barding now correctly provides armor to camels. Oh, that's right. Camels actually give a 50% damage reduction instead of a 20% damage reduction, which is hilarious. We remove the scout from displaying under the Abbasid Siege Workshop. Imams with the Faith Technology can no longer convert any religious units. Trade ships make gold. Tier 3 does stuff. Great. Elite Army Tactics. Oh my god. Golden Age now currently reduces the production time of all units and not just the first tier of each unit type. Oh, that's a fucking funny bug! Oh my god! <laughs> fucking holy shit, that's so good. 
Camel unit base armor has been properly applied. Armored caravans no longer provide this. Okay. Fixed a bug. Great. Officials can now supervise. Keeps universities and blacksmiths. Yes. Battle hardened tech. Icon moved. Yashugan has wood cost reduced when trained from building from the ore of the spirit way. Yep. I mean, no mention at all of the weird uh, click locations. Poor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I believe that Tower War Elephants have been renamed to Tower Elephants, which I think is good. Tower Elephant, War Elephant. I don't think any of these are that notable. Other than this one. Um, the Prelate has been added under Feudal Age. And I think uh, Prelots were, will no longer stop inspiring a bump by another unit. Thank fucking God. Superior Mobility will no longer apply the 50% move speed bonus twice. Woo! Um... Yeah, Demon Ash, did I talk about the infinite range spear bug? I mean, it exists and I hope it doesn't ruin our lives. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it seems like the biggest bulk of the changes are encapsulated in these Civ-specific tunings and these core unit tunings. I mean, in particular, early horsemen, I mean, this is strange as hell. Strange as hell. Owl fusses aren't English longbow camp changes pretty big. Yeah, I mean, I'm sort of indifferent towards it because it just seems like they're 